Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Our beloved brother and the apostle of Christ, Paul, adds in Romans chapter 5 verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith is the premise. Faith is the genesis, the first step to believe in who Christ is. We all know that Christ is the Son of the living God. We understand that. The Bible is very clear about that. The Bible is also very clear to say that Christ is also God manifested in the flesh. In the first epistle written by Paul to Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16, we need to have faith in Christ. That's the first step to believe in who He is. But our beloved brother James adds even more to that. In James chapter 2, verses 20 and 24, our beloved brother says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Ye see then how, that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Isn't that interesting? I would like to know if today's churches are preaching these two verses, that faith and good works work hand in hand. I doubt that very much because you look at these apostate lawless churches, all they preach is faith, 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 which is good. You need to believe in who Christ is, but according to our beloved brother James, faith is more than that. Real faith is illustrated or demonstrated by obedience, by our good works. Obedience to who? To Christ. You worship who you obey. If you have faith and trust and confidence in Christ, your faith be demonstrated by your good works, by your obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua. It's about faith and obedience, and not just faith alone. Anyone can walk around and say, hey, I have faith in Jesus, I believe in Jesus, and then he turns around and smokes a big pack of cigarettes and gets drunk, or checks out pornography, or looks at girls in a way that he should not. That's not faith, that's sin. Sin is the complete opposite of faith. When you are faithful to Christ, you strive to go and sin no more. As Christ said to the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Likewise also to the man who was paraplegic for 38 years, go and sin no more. And what is sin? Sin is the transgression of God's holy law, His Ten Commandments. According to the first epistle written by John chapter 3 verse 4. So faith and good works work hand in hand. Faith alone According to James chapter 2 verse 20, faith alone is dead without works. Works has to do with obedience. When you have real faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, if you have real faith in Him, you will be moved by the Holy Spirit to obey the one who you claim to be your Savior, God and King and Lord. Anyone can say, I believe in Jesus Christ. Even the devils believe and tremble. According to James chapter 2 verse 19, are the devils also going to make it home to heaven? I doubt it very much. The devils, Satan, hates the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan knows that Christ exists, but he will do anything in his power to make you sin, to show that you do not have good works. Good works is an illustration or demonstration of your faith. That is real faith. When you obey the Lord Jesus Christ, when you trust him enough to say, okay, I will obey what he says. What does Paul say in Romans chapter 7, verse 25? The verse says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Void of the Holy Spirit, you abide in the flesh. You are not born from above or born again. You are still earthly. You are not spiritually driven by the Holy Spirit to say no to sin. And you will abide in the law of sin which leads to death, according to Romans chapter 6, verse 23. But in the mind, for all true followers of Christ, in the mind should be the law of God, because the law of God defines the love of God. So if you are a true follower of Christ, the law of God will be in your forehead, where the mind is. Where else do we read? In your forehead. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, about the mark of the beast, which will be in your forehead, not on your forehead, but in your forehead, according to the King James Bible. And 
in your forehead is the mind, your brain to make decisions, to abide by the law of God or by the law of sin. In other words, the mark of the beast, when it will be enforced by law. If you accept the mark of the beast, you will abide in sin or the law of sin, which leads to death. Furthermore, we are also encouraged by Paul to have the mind of Christ where the law of God abides. When you read Romans chapter 7 verse 25, again we read, So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God. And in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, our beloved brother Paul, the apostle of Christ says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Let this mind where the law of God abides. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So in the mind of Christ is the law of God. In the mind of the Apostle Paul is the law of God, according to Romans chapter 7, verse 25. As followers of Christ, in our minds should also be the law of God, which defines the love, the love of God. And the law of God is what? His holy, perfect, beautiful, ten commandments. The covenant of God with his people is his Ten Commandments, according to Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 13, and also in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10, and Hebrews chapter 10 verse 16. And those two verses say very clearly that the law of God is written in the hearts and the minds of his people. So here we have Romans chapter 7 verse 25, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, and Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10 and Hebrews chapter 10 verse 16 which shows that the law of God should be in our minds if you are a sincere true follower of Christ who has faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as our beloved brother James reminds us that faith and good works work hand in hand faith points back to our good works our faith is illustrated by our good works, is demonstrated by our good works, by our, by our obedience to Christ. And when you practice the law of God, when you practice good works, when you obey the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are reflecting your real faith in Him. Again, anyone can say, I believe in Jesus. I have faith in Jesus. I believe in His name. And then he leaves his Sunday worship services and gets drunk while watching NFL football on Sunday afternoon. How is that faith? That's not faith. That's sin. And as a follower of Christ, as your brother in the faith, I urge you to solidify your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith is demonstrated by our good works. It takes action. We are to be moved by the Holy Spirit to keep the commandments of God, to demonstrate our obedience to Christ, to repent of our sins when we fall short of the law of God. For sin is the transgression of God's holy law. According to the first epistle written by John, chapter 3, verse 4. When we fall short, and we all do, we all fall short of the glory of God. And if I remember correctly, that's in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. We all fall short of the glory of God, and we all need to repent. And the Holy Spirit will convict you to repent of your sin when you break any of God's holy Ten Commandments. That is a demonstration of your real faith. When you go on your knees and you ask God, please forgive me, help me please to go and sin no more. The same words uttered by Christ to the woman caught in adultery in John chapter 8 verse 11, and also to the man who was paraplegic for 38 years. Christ says, go and sin no more. He says, stop breaking my law, abide in my love. If you have real faith in me, you will believe, you will believe in what I say. You will believe in my parables. You will believe in my prophecies. You will believe in my commandments and abide in them and apply them. That is real faith. That is real faith when you apply the law of God, when you do good works, as per again, James chapter 2, verses 20 and 24, where James, our beloved brother, says that faith without works is dead. If you reject the law of God, or good works, or you reject the idea of obeying the Lord Jesus Christ, then your faith is dead. Your faith is worthless. Verse 24 in James chapter 2 says again, You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Faith is the stepping stone. It's the first step to help you to lead to obedience to Christ. Again, anyone can say, I believe in Jesus. I believe in on the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone can say that. Even the devils believe and tremble. 
The devils believe and tremble. They believe in Jesus Christ. They know he exists. But the devils have turned against Christ. Satan turned against Christ. He knows that Christ exists, but he defied him. And today's Christians, many of them, not all, but a great number of them who profess Jesus Christ as their Lord, King, God, and Savior are doing what Satan did. They are defying the Lord Jesus Christ. They will say, oh, I believe in Jesus. This is all good. I believe in him. Praise the Lord and all that stuff. But if you don't obey what the Lord says, if you don't apply what he says, then your faith is worthless because you have no works to support or to, apply or to, or to demonstrate your faith in Jesus Christ. What does Jesus Christ, Yeshua says in John chapter 14, verse 21, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Obedience to Christ is key. It is one of the prerequisites for being considered as a saint of God. My favorite Bible verse, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12 says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And where are the Ten Commandments of God? They are found in Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 to 17. This is the same holy law that is written in the minds and the hearts of God's people. The sinners have something else in their mind. They don't have the law of God in their minds. They have the law of sin, which is to break God's commandments. But if you abide in the love of God, if you abide in Christ and truly believe in who He is, the Holy Spirit of truth will guide you and move you to take action to obey Christ, obey the Holy Spirit, and keep the Holy Ten Commandments of God, which define His love, as per the first epistle written by John chapter 5, verse 3. Again, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 says that in the forehead will be the mark of the beast. In the forehead. That's where the mind is. You're, where, that's where your brain is to make decisions. But Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 7, verse 25, that in the mind is the law of God. If you are faithful and obedient to Christ, if you are not faithful and obedient to Christ, if you have no faith in Him and no works, no obedience towards Christ, then you are in the flesh and not in the spirit. And the law of sin abides in you. And that's what the mark of the beast is. It's about disobedience to Christ and his holy law of love, the law of God, his holy, immutable, perfect Ten Commandments, which defines the love of God. I urge you to have the faith of Abraham, who had complete faith in God, but he also kept the Ten Commandments of God. According to Genesis chapter 26, verse 5, so did Moses, so did the prophets of old. They had faith in God, but they kept also the law of God, the perfect, beautiful law of God, which is our duty for us as Christians to keep. As per Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. We are born in the image of God. We are born to give glory to God. We are born to love God. Let us do that. Let us have the faith of Jesus and keep his commandments. If you want to be a saint of God, as per the definition of who a saint is, in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, you are not saved by works. Your faith in Christ will save you, but faith According to our beloved brother James, the Apostle of Christ says that faith without works is dead. In James chapter 2 verse 20, faith leads you to being obedient to Christ, to doing good works, to keeping His holy divine law, the law of God, His Ten Commandments, which define His love. Have the faith of Jesus, but also keep the commandments of God. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and enter through the gates into the city. That's in Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. And that beautiful heavenly city is New Jerusalem, where the saints of God will be when they join Christ at His return, because they love God and they keep His commandments out of faith in the Prince of Peace. May the love, peace, and grace of the Most High God 
be with you in these troubling end times.